Hi there YouTube, my name's Simon and this is my very first YouTube video um, and I just want to do a, a little review of a rucksack I bought recently. Uh, it's a Swedish Army LK35 pack with the external frame um, and uh, I just wanted yeah, to show you what modifications I've done to it. I bought this pack based on a review that Mike from MCQ Bushcraft had done. Um, uh, he did a, an amazing review. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. Um, and really, thank you, Mike, because uh, without your review, I wouldn't have gone out and bought one myself, and I'm really pleased that I did. But before I go into um, the review, I just want to state that um, I'm not claiming any of these ideas to be my own. Um, you know, I, I did what most people do and had a look at um, other people's YouTube videos and, uh, and used some ideas and, and changed others. Uh, and I think what I've done works really well. It certainly works really well for me, so I'd just like to share it. So this is the pack. When you get it, it will just be this part here. Um, the pouches are one of the things that I put on. Um, a lot of people go for the Swedish Army pouches, which match it colour-wise perfectly, um, but they were just a bit too small for what I wanted. I needed to be able to put a Crusader Cup cook system in, in one pocket, and it just wouldn't fit in the, in the Swedish one. So I chose to use British Army PLCE pouches um, and sewed them down the sides and along the bottom. Um, and the idea being that you can then get stuff down the back you've got an additional pocket down here and I keep a windshield down there and it's perfect for what I need um, so I'll, I'll talk about the pouches a little bit more in a minute I'm just going to go around the pack and talk about some of the other modifications that I made first so that being number one number two I sewed a little patch on the front this was a Christmas present for my daughter it had to go on the back of the pack it originally comes with um, thin webbing straps which are perfectly comfortable just after Christmas, I went on a three-day uh, journey, a three-day walk with this pack, um, about 40 miles, and they were fine. I didn't have any problems with my shoulders at all. Uh, but since then, I've put these on just because I thought it would be nice to have a bit of extra padding on the shoulders, um, just to make it even more comfortable than it already is. But believe me, it wasn't a problem how it was. Um, so that's one of the things I did, and they're exactly like the Swedish uh, straps in that they just uh, strap onto the frame itself at the top here and down in the bottom corners. Um, just, just with simple straps that, the, that the, um, the, the straps actually came with. These are British Army straps. I think they're off an Arctic Bergen, but I'm not entirely sure about that, but they were out of my uh, local um, Army surplus shop. The other thing I did is I put on this hip belt. This is a, it's actually a German uh, blast belt um, I got off eBay. Didn't cost a lot of money, about a tenner, I think, um, and that makes a huge difference. There's no strap, there's no waist belt on the pack when you get it. It doesn't come with one. So if you, if you, if you want to be able to carry some of that load on your hips rather than just on your shoulders, you're going to need to add something or other. And this was my solution. Some people use the US Army Alice ones. Um, I couldn't find one at the time on eBay um, that, was, that didn't involve shipping from the States. So I went and got this one here. Unfortunately, it was a bit big when I got it. So I've had to butcher it a little bit. I had to cut it. Um, but because it's all covered in this molly, uh, strapping everywhere. I was able to use a couple of cargo straps and just cinch it back together again and it hasn't been any it hasn't been uh, any problem at all. Like I said, I did that walk at Christmas and, and it, it stayed together and it was perfectly comfortable. So that's two um, modifications I did. I also added a strap here. Now I've seen a lot of people on YouTube make them out of uh, paracord, woven paracord and things. I could have done that but to be honest I didn't have enough paracord at the time but I did have a load of these uh, webbing straps so I just put that through the frame and that's perfectly fine. I can lug the thing about like that, no problem. I can hang it up uh, from a tree, you know, when I get to camp, uh, um, and that's adequate, perfectly adequate. The other thing I did is just down here on the side of the frame, I added another strap like this, which is just larks footed through the frame, and that holds my ax on, so I can pull my ax out. There's a void here, which is perfect to hold the ax. Obviously the void is there to keep the pack away from your back, um, but the added bonus is that it creates somewhere where you can put your axe and that just slides down the, down the, down the back of the blast pouch there, but a uh, blast belt there and it's held on by this strap. 
cinch it up and it's held in place. It ain't going anywhere, okay? It's held in place. External straps. There's a load of them on this pack, um, so you can lash on extra gear. Uh, the main straps, which hold the lid down, they continue down and go through these little points here and then wrap underneath the pack, which is great because you can use it for tying on gear underneath. I just keep a little kneel mat, which I'm gonna kneel on now actually, because my knees are getting wet. Um, some people put wool blankets. Uh, you, we take a small sleeping bag or a, or a carry mat or something underneath there, no props. Um, so you can use that. And then obviously as you tighten the lid down, that just cinches it up there and holds whatever you've got there um, in place. You could probably add an additional carbon strap there if you wanted to not have that falling loose every time you release the lid, but it's perfectly all right as it is. On the top of the pack, there are two additional straps. And these are huge. I mean, you can carry a huge amount of gear underneath these. Um, you can carry quite a large sleep system under there. And that's what I do. That's where I keep my sleeping bag or whatever sleep system I'm using. Um, this is my sleep system I used on my walk that I did at Christmas. Um, and that's because I was hammock camping. I've got a under blanket and a top quilt in there. And that goes underneath there. And straps down. Straps down nicely. Simple as that. Okay, and that's held in place. I keep it in a dry bag, obviously, because it's not protected by the rucksack itself. So you need to keep that dry. Um, so that's the top. And these are, like I say, these are huge. You could put, you could put loads on. You could have quite a big. You could have maybe one of those big American modular sleep systems. Sleep systems that uh, you know could fit under there quite nicely. Okay, just take that off again. All right. Before we take a look at the inside of the pack, I just want to uh, talk about these pouches again. So I wanted to be able to carry a Crusader, ke a Crusader Cup cook system in here, um, and that's what this is designed to. These are actually utility pouches, but they're the same size as the British Army water bottle pouch, so I know it will take the British Army um, water bottle and cup. So in there I can fit 58 pattern bottle, fork, my honey stove fits nicely down the back, the cup itself fits down in the bottom, and then underneath that, I have, get it out, I have my homemade Crusader cup lid. Okay, so all that will fit in one side, and like I said, the windshield just slots down behind it. In the other utility pouch, I keep my med kit, it sits in the top for easy access. I've got a fire steel. There's a little Velcro tab on the front so you can hold the hold bits and pieces in place. I just use that to, um, to attach my fire steel, all of that's often just around my neck for easy access. And then I have another little dry bag which I keep possibles in. My fire kit is in there, torch, um, bits and pieces like that. So they're yeah, easy to get to. Right, let's take a look inside, shall we? Two straps on the front, loose them off like this. And you have one big compartment. There is a smaller compartment at the back uh, with a little elasticated top which you can put a, um, a bladder system, a water drinking bladder system in. I used to keep my knife and my saw in, um, but yeah, waterproofs, anything can go down there really. I keep all of my gear in dry bags inside the pack just to um, make it easier for me to see what's in there and pull out what I need, but also just to give them an extra level of protection from the weather should the weather get in. So at the top I keep my tarp. Catapult and ammo. I've got room for a couple of litres of water in addition to the litre I carry on the side, so I can carry three litres. I've got a food bag. There's enough food in there for one day, but I've carried food for three days in here and there's been plenty of room spare, so you can carry a lot in here. Food. In here I've got a, a pile of Pertex jacket, like a buffalo one, not, not the buffalo one, um, but that's quite bulky. But that compresses down in this stuff sack here, that fits in there fine. I've got warm clothes, just a um, base layer, merino base layer, hat, gloves, etc. I have my cooking pot, I've got a zebra billy in there with my brew kit in. I have a small ground sheet which I put underneath my tarp just to keep my gear on. I have a full set of waterproofs. I have my hammock. And I keep a bit of foam mat off a of carrot mat in there as well. That's another little tip I got off um, Micro MCQ Bushcraft. Um, just keeps the 
pack in shape stops things from poking through um, and it's there if you need it in an emergency. I carry a little kneel mat on the bottom of my pack anyway, but if I didn't have a caravan with me and I was playing on hammock camping and for some reason I couldn't, I've got something I could put on the ground to protect me from the cold. So that just lives in there. I had to, I had to cut it a little bit to fit, to fit, but you know, there's no problems. Okay, so in the back of the pack, we've got this little elasticated bit here. It's quite large actually. You can put quite a lot of stuff in there, but I just keep my knife and my Laplander saw in there. Um, and that works well for me. At the top of the pack, to cinch it all together, we have a, a cord which runs around and this quite ingenious uh, locking system here, which is just basically a toggle, a wedge-shaped toggle, and you slide it down, and press the toggle down through this other part here, and that acts like a cam and locks the cord in place, cinching it, cinching it together. To release it, you just simply push that toggle up, and then that takes, that takes the, uh, the cam action off the cord and releases it. Um, the lid is really well designed. It's a huge lid, it covers the pack really well, but because it's so big it does allow you to overfill the pack. So if you wanted to cram more stuff in there for a longer trip or, or in the winter where you wanted warm stuff, you could do that easily and that would still cover the pack to keep it waterproof. Um, now obviously when I sewed these pouches on, I've stitched through the fabric, which may or may not let water in. It hasn't been, I haven't been out in a proper deluge in it to find out, but I'm not that concerned because I keep all of my kit in separate dry bags anyway. If a bit of water gets in, I'm not too concerned. Um, the other thing this pack has on the front here is a loop here to carry an axe. Um, axe will just slot down here um, and there's, it's adjustable at the bottom to hold it in place. And the lid then actually covers the head of the axe, keeping it dry, which is, which is brilliant, I think. Or you can put a shovel in there, you can put whatever, walking poles, whatever you wanted. Now this pack is available in, um, in canvas or in a sort of ballistic nylon, which is what I went for. Um, the canvas one is, is, I'm sure, perfectly good in the wet and everything, but I chose because, um, you know, I'm often out in wet weather to go for the, the nylon one, uh, which is a kind of like a cordura, with a PU coating on the inside, which makes it a bit more waterproof. Um, but like I say, it is available in both um, in both materials. Okay, well, thanks again, Mike from MCQ Brushcraft for um, your review, uh, which obviously um, inspired me to go and buy this pack and to do the video. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, it's my first video, so um, I would, you know, any any feedback and comments would be greatly appreciated so I know how I've, how I've done really. Um, if you feel like liking it, hit the like button, that'd be fantastic. Um, and thank you to my daughter who very kindly offered to come out on a cold and frosty morning to help with the filming. Uh, so uh, yeah, well, see you next time. Thanks ever so much.